Let's go to Luke 2. We'll go Luke. Verse 52. Can you put that verse over there? Can you read all of us? Jesus increase in wisdom and increase in stature and increase in favor with God and he increased in favor with men. Where I, the, the, what I want to talk about is the stature where Jesus grew in stature. You can grow in favor with God, but do you know that if you cannot grow in favor with men, you will remain with a big problem. But that's not where I am. The Bible says he grew, another version will say, he grew in stature. Let's examine what is the meaning of stature. Your version should be saying he grew in age. But stature is more than age. It has to do with maturity. It has to do with standing. Do you get that? Now, when a person is mature, you, you, you can have, uh, say, 5,000 people. If those people are not matured, their stature or their standing is weak. The same applies in prayer. Our stature, when we stand before God, our standing, our authority depends on how much, how, how much sure are we in God. Hallelujah. Do, do, do you understand that? How much mature are we in God? Our stature in the place of prayer is very important. Let me give you an example. There's a story about the sons of Sceva in the Bible. Have you ever read about that story in the book of Acts? The sons of Sceva in the book of Acts, they saw the apostle Paul casting out demons. Come on, come on, come on. Then they come and they were casting out demons and they say, in the name of of Jesus of whom Paul is preaching we casting out those devils and the devils ask them who are you do you understand that who are you and then they uttered a statement Paul we know Jesus we know who are you what is your standing it's so likely that these people were born again. But their standing in the Lord was weak, was not matured. Their stature was very weak. And the demons did damage to them. Whereas Paul will come one way out. You see? They could not do that. Because they are standing. They are authority. Now, what you need to understand with that scripture, it says, even your Jesus grew in that stage. It doesn't mean he came and just because he was the son of God and he was on top. He grew. The Onus also is upon us to grow in stature. To grow in the standing with God. To grow in wisdom. That means you grow in handling of things. If you look at Jesus' handling of things, how he will answer questions when he was asked, they will bring a woman. Look, they will bring a woman using the law again. They say, the law says if we have found 
a person uh, uh, ping in uh, committing adultery, we must stone it. They use the law. Then Jesus, he because he grew in stature, he was grown, he was a grown person. He asked them a question. In answering, he grew in terms of handling this situation. He says, whoever does not have sin, let him cast the first stone. See, the, the way he was answering the question, if they have asked me, maybe, I would say, yeah, the Lord says, but you know what, he called a lady because you know, but Jesus didn't say that. You see? How we handle is a maturity. The same way with prayer, because my subject is along those lines, the same way with prayer, there can be thousands of people praying, but their maturity is very important. Am I talking to someone? Their standing with Jehovah is very important. Now, we must grow in our standing with Jehovah. And in numbers alone. Let me give an example of what I'm saying. Here is a situation in the Old Testament of, 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 of uh, uh, Abraham and the angels. Now, there is Lot. God is about to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah. Now, I want to give you, I, I had a message that I preached years ago called Righteous Lot. I don't know whether I still have that message. Very powerful message. You can teach you. If you want to learn lessons about life, you can learn the lessons from Lot. Now, here's a tricky part about Lot. The Bible says Lot was a righteous man. And Abraham was a righteous man. Look at these two righteous people. Lot is staying in Sodom and Gomorrah. He's staying there. And God is about to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah. But the righteous Lord doesn't know. But with, 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 with Abraham, God comes to him and says, Shall I hide what I'm about to do? A Sodom and a Gomorrah. Seeing that Abraham is my friend. And Abraham is a nation. That means the guy had built so much altars around Middle East. And it became a system in such a way that God could not do anything without him permitting him. These are two righteous people. Now, we need to ask ourselves a question. If we stay in our locality and a lot of evil prevail in our locality without us knowing, that says a lot about our stature and our standing with God. In your family, somebody passed on. You know nothing about it. It says a lot. But your standing and your stature with God. Listen, God had to, he, he had to beg Abraham. He said, I can't. Yes, they, 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 their weakness, I mean, their, their sin have come as a memorial, you see. You know, I, having said that, a memorial is something very important. Let me assist you with something about memorial. Now, never, you see, sometimes when pe pe people con con compare themselves with evil people and they see them prospering for a long time and they want to copy their behavior, say, you, you as a person, you are not, uh, you, are, you, are, you, are, you are living a good life, a holy life, but it seems like things don't go well with you, don't go well with you. And then you're looking at that evil person. 
things are going well you are even present and then you say this thing is not working be careful about that because the memorial the bible says they are, it says their sins have come as a memory to me now that means these things the, the cup now is full sometimes the sins of those people are not yet full for God to take action and you want to copy those people and then not, the day this, the, the cup is full that's when you will see and that's what happened with Sodom and Gomorrah God says now I want to go and find out if their sins now have reached the level okay if you do good go, go to X chapter number uh, I think it's X, 12, it's X chapter number 10 yes X10, you find a man called Cornelius. The angel, when he comes to Cornelius, he said a particular statement. The reason the angel came to Cornelius, he said, because your givings and your prayers have come as a memorial. That means the prayers now are now full. For the Bible says, when the clouds be full of rain, they empty themselves. And then the angel says, God says in heaven, I cannot stay without coming and 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 answer this guy. So, what is the meaning of that stature again? Because the guy now has got is has has piled up prayers, has piled up the giving. In fact, the giving, if you can think, he might not. In his mind, he, he, he would have thought that, oh, I was giving a lot and nothing is happening to me. But when these things does not come as a memorial to you, I mean, they have not yet a memorial to God. That means you, the answer might not come as you have expected it. Until these things have reached as a, a memorial. I, I, are you learning something, church? I'm showing you both the memorial or, or, or the, the cup being full on the negative and on the positive. You can see that sometimes I will push you as a church to pray. I will push you. And you say, Pastor, we are praying. We see nothing. The clouds are not full. Keep on pushing. Keep on pushing. I want to say this again, you know. A lot of intercession and prayer is associated a lot with poverty. What do I mean by that? You will see that a lot of people who are praying, they don't seem to be people who are successful. And you who are praying, you will think that, ah, I'm busy making a lot of prayers, but I'm not progressing financially. Listen, God never said when you pray too much, you're going to get easy money. It's not about money this thing. It's about standing. You will perish. How many people are perishing with their money? You intercessors, they think you are stupid. Let me tell you, this world will not go far without intercession. If prayer is not made in a society, if prayer is not done in a society, things will go way wild. If prayer, if churches come and talk gimmicks, in fact, where I was going, I, was, I wanted to show you why, why there's so much wrong happening in our society. It's the problem is not the society, it's the church. Let's go to Ezekiel 11. I want to show you something. The, anytime, okay, maybe go to us before, before, before we go to Ezekiel 11, Go to Hosea, I think it's Hosea 4. If me, me, is Hosea, let me give you that verse quickly. Oh. Go to Hosea 4, verse 9. I'm trying to teach you something here that you, you must learn. This scripture is a very powerful scripture. It's a very, very powerful scripture. 
Just read that line, just this line, like people like. How, how God views society. It says every time you look at society, it is look at the priest. Every time you want to look at society, look at the priest. When you look at the priest you can see the behavior of society. How do society behave? The church. How do society behave? You... When, look at, let me give you an example. Teachers can, can, can attest to that. When we had assemblies and we were praying, the level of crime in the schools was close to zero. When the society, when when, 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 when they said, take out prayer in schools, the church did nothing. The church was never active. Like they, that, they saw nothing wrong. They were busy doing their own things. And you want to blame those children. Okay. Let's continue Ezekiel 11. Let me show you one of the dangers of a church not having a good stature. Ezekiel 11. Learn something from Ezekiel 11. We're going to start there. I want to show you the mind of God. And those people who say, take away the Old Testament. Mm. Here is a story of Ezekiel. God is doing something to Ezekiel. Are, are you learning something? Sure. Then the Spirit lifted me up and brought me to the east gate. Now, of the Lord's house which faced eastward and the door of the gate were 25 men look at the 25 men among whom I saw Jazania the son of Azur and Pelatia the son of Penaia princes of the people okay let's continue that now another version said these are the elders where are they, these people? Son of men, these are men who devise iniquity and give wicked counsel in the city. Who say, the time is not near to build the houses, this city, in the cauldron, and we are the meat. Continue. Therefore prophesy against them, or prophes or, I mean, against them, prophesy, O son of men. Then the Spirit of the Lord fell upon me and said to me, Speak, thus says the Lord. Thus you have said, O house of Israel, for I know the things that comes into your mind. You have multiplied your slain in the city. You have filled with streets with slain. Therefore, thus says the Lord. So, prophet Angalabana is. You slain whom you have laid in the midst, they are the meat, and this city is the children, and shall bring upon you in the midst. Continue. Let's see what happens when you prophesy. You have feared the sword, and I'll bring a sword upon you, says the Lord of God. And I'll bring you out of the midst to deliver you the hands of strangers and accuse judgment upon you. Yeah. God is prophesying against these people. Eh? It shall fall by the sword. Continue. Continue. I will judge the borders, blah, blah, blah. You shall know, for you're not walking my statues, blah, blah, blah. Continue. In some way, Malachi is a prophet. Now it happened. Now, this is the verse I'm looking for. Now it happened while I was prophesying that Pelatia, the son of Penaia, died. Then I fell on my face and I cried with a loud voice and said, Oh Lord, will you complete 
and a complete will you make a complete end of the remnant of Israel now listen to this these people they were in exile and the person, okay, it's just I don't have time because of time. I won't take you to another one, another one, whereby these people they are in the church. These are elders. They are giving counsel. With, no, let's access counsel's right. But they, they, they are wicked. They are giving advice to the city. Wicked advice to the city. They are corrupt. In fact, another verse says these are bringing corruption in the city. These are pastors. These are priests who bring corruption. Another vision, another chapter on Ezekiel, you find that these guys, we have Tassa, the Bible, that, that verse, he, the Bible says it, these are threats, exactly threats. He, the Bible says God dragged Ezekiel by the locks. He took him to the temple. In the spirit, Jerusalem. Even now, this time, umususa umususa papilon umixa Jerusalem. We am come. Bua uskunda kala ne sondoen. Lok lok uskunda kala sondoen, sondoen. It feeds and spread into society. So anytime the church is corrupt, society is bound to be corrupt. Sadly, even pastors don't understand the power that God has given them. You know what God said to Jeremiah when they were in captivity? He says, Jeremiah, don't go outside of captivity. Pray for the for Babylon. I mean for Babylon in captivity. He says, in their prosperity, listen to this. He says, in their prosperity, you will be prosperous. Who must pray for their prosperity? Jeremiah. Then it says, in, their pro- in the prosperity of these ones, you will be prosperous. What does that mean? It means you as a church, if we pray for society to, for things to go right in our society, in their success, the church shall be successful. Give a God. In their success, in the success of those who don't know God, because there are people who take it upon themselves to pray for the well being of their country. You see, you, 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 you young people don't know, you will find out when you are a Christian. Let me tell you what your parents will be doing to you. Sadly, it will not happen. It, it, it never happened to me because I, I will not allow it. Your parents, because they've seen so much evil and they've hide it. So when things start to go bad, you are a Christian. They will come and say, Lalam, Sesenan, Awat Lut, Asamben Mumi Samuel. Because this situation, so it's in a good to see a far. So you could do my alaba. And you agree. Ah. Okay, think about this. Think about this. Think about, you, are, you are on social media. You are on social media. Many of those who are HIV positive, number one, and many of those who are depressed. Are in depression because sometimes depression will give you some hallucinations. These two things they are on HIV, they are in depression. They go to their parents with the sickness. Maybe the doctors don't know. They say, Listen, 
We are so, that's what they say, Funa go to your us. The problem that they have, one, they are HIV. The other problem, they are in depression. <laughs> Think about, look at the people laba humble babuta laba luana laba spane calling. Find out the truth behind look to us. You will find two things. Others, I don't know that they have depression. But if you know like me, as a wise man, you will know that this one, this thing is depression. And the parents, what did they do? On your trust, bro. On a lead. You're on social media. Go Google. Huh? Find out. If you cure the depression <laughs> like easily, you know, I, I'll teach you how to deal with that easily. Is you cannot see if you are a child of God, you have depression. I can help you to do that. I can help you to deal with that easily. And 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 the parents are the ones who are encouraging these children. Because now most of them they are in church. Basalwan. We have told them last one. No. In Christ, listen, in Christ all is well. But we didn't tell them how to handle these situations. Even if we told them, if the voice, it depends which voice is strong. If the voice of your family is stronger than the voice of God in you, then you are in trouble. Because there are many voices, you know. And it depends which voice is strong. There's a voice of your family. There's a voice of your wife. There's a voice of your children. There's a voice of society. These are voices. They are speaking. Depends which one is strong. If the voice of God is not strong in your life, you will take wrong decisions. Like these people who were, who were partners on doing, but my elder partners on doing. The voice of society was very strong than the voice of God. And they believed. And they did not know that in church, when you feed, feed on these things, then you are in trouble. It's like when you are a pastor, you see things that are happening. And then you see other pastors are, are successful, they are prophesying lies. And then you, 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 you envy that. Because there's a way in which God grows a, a, a person. He grows them by, by their need. Do, do you want to fast? Any, let me tell you, any pastor who grow out of nowhere, you don't know the prayer life, run away from that person. You have not seen him laboring in prayer. Ah, oh, you're in trouble. You go and consult that pastor. You have never seen that, the prayer life of that individual. You have never seen him laboring, crying. Do you know sometimes you can pray for years and something does not happen? Not because God has not heard your prayer, but because the clouds are not full. Understand the principle of clouds being full. Cornelius, if we can discover how many years Cornelius prayed. We'll discover that Cornelius prayed for years before the angel came. It didn't happen that the angel just came. Anywhere where there was revival, ask yourself what happened for revival to come. To come. Revival cannot just come without the clouds being full. It cannot. Nobody appears out of nowhere. Hallelujah. Yo. Whatever I wanted to do. Okay, I need us to, to work. Let's work, Basana. Now, I said to you, Jesus grow in stature and in wisdom. And I explained to you what is stature. And that's what we need to have, stature. Do you understand that? Stature. 
And stature is achieved through maturity and in knowing God and in prayer. And if we are a society, we must pray as a church. This society depends upon us. The people, I mean, the people, the priest. This society depends on us. When we are here, we must understand that we are a priest. Jesus says you are a priest. You are a priest. He has made you a king and a priest. So your value and your stature in exercising the priesthood ministry is very key. As priests, if we do not take our rightful place, society will go down. And in the history books of heaven, when our books are open, we will be asked, what did you do when things go way wide? Today I want us to pray. I want us to stand against the evil in our society. We will not allow our society to be where it is. We will use our right standing with God. Our stature and pray. Are, are you with me church? Let's stand up.